This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. Let us solve one more simple problem. The question is find the center of mass of a triangular lamina. So you can see here a triangular lamina L M N. It is uh, subdivided into narrow strips each parallel to the base M N. Okay, see this is the subdivided into narrow strips like this, isn't it? You can see here by symmetry each strip has its center of mass at its midpoint. Each strip is having its center of mass at its midpoint, isn't it? If we join the midpoint of all these strips, we get the median LP. Okay, midpoint of all these strips, if we join, we get the median, that is LP. The center of mass of the triangle as a whole is therefore, uh, it lies on the median LP. Similarly, we can argue that it lies on the median MQ and NR. See, MQ and NR median also coincides at the same point, that is G. This means the center of mass lies on the point of concurrence of the medians on the centroid G of the triangle. That is the solution for this. Okay. So, now consider one more simple problem. Find the center of mass of a uniform L-shaped lamina. A thin flat plate with dimensions as shown, the mass of the lamina is 3 kg. Okay. Choosing, let's see the solution for this. So choosing x and y axis as here given in this figure. Okay. We have the coordinates of the vertices of the L shaped lamina as given in this particular figure okay the coordinates of x core a is 2 comma 0 and f here also 0 comma 2 and o is 0 comma 0 it is given in this figure so we can think of the l shape to consist of three squares isn't it c1 c2 c3 are the centers and we can think of these three squares in this l shape Each of length 1 meter. The square's length is of 1 meter. Okay. The mass of each square is 1 kg since the lamina is uniform. The centers of mass are C1, C2 and C3. Okay. Of the squares are by symmetry their geometric centers and have coordinates uh, 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 3 by 2, 1 by 2 and 1 by 2, comma. 3 by 2 respectively which means by symmetry we can get the value of their uh, geometric centers c1 c2 and c3 okay that is uh, given by 1 by 2 comma 1 by 2 3 by 2 comma 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 comma 3 by 2 respectively we take the masses of the squares to be concentrated at these points so the center of mass of this whole l shape is nothing but x comma y isn't it whole x comma y is the center of mass of this whole l shape so now we should find that we know the values of uh, x1 y1 x2 y3 and x2 x3 y3 that is x1 y1 1 by 2 comma 1 by 2 isn't it x2 y2 that is given by 3 by 2 comma 1 by 2 and x3 y3 that is given by 1 by 2 comma 3 by 2 so now we can find out the center of uh, mass that is uh, x value that is given by m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 
divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 isn't it so here c1 this is the side this is one this is one meter this is one meter and here it is one by two so c1 and here also it is one by two we got that c2 also we got see the distance up this whole distance is one meter this is also one meter half of this this one is one by two and here also whole distance is one meter this one is one meter so half of this is one by two so c1 is one by two comma one by two and here c2 is how much this one hole is one one plus one by two that is nothing but three by two isn't it and then uh, from the x-axis it is how much one by two and c3 again from the x-axis it is three by two and from the y-axis it is one by two so we know the formula to find the center of mass so m1 m2 m3 is one and x1 we know that is one by two x2 is three by two x3 is again one by two m1 m2 m3 is uh, one okay one 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 that is uh, one plus one plus one okay if you further simplify this we get 5 by 6 meter and similarly we should calculate y m1 y1 m2 y2 m3 y3 isn't it so divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 m1 is 1 and y1 is how much 1 by 2 m2 is 1 and y2 is how much 1 by 2 m3 is 1 and y3 is 3 by 2 and here again it is 3 to further simplify this we get uh, the value 5 by 6 meter only okay the center of mass of the l shape lies on the line od and uh, it, the value is uh, x and y is 5 by 6 isn't it yes so now let us see motion of center of mass okay which means physical importance for a system of particles what is the importance of this you know center of mass uh, when we consider the system of particles so we can uh, write the equation that we considered before while calculating the center of mass that is using the vector that is we got this equation r is equal to sigma m i r i by m isn't it so we can rewrite this equation as r into m sigma m i r i isn't it yes so if you expand this We can get this, we can write this as sigma mi means what? It is summation up to n terms that we can write it as m1 r1 
like M2, R2 up to Mn, Rn. Okay. So, differentiating these two, two sides of this equation with respect to time. That is M dr by dt. We get M1 dr1 by dt plus M2 dr2 by dt and it continues. So we can write this one as M dr by dt is what? Velocity that is M1 V1 M2 V2 3 V3 and up to Mn Vn. Okay. So, V1 is equal to dr1 by dt is the velocity of first particle and V2 is equal to dr2 by dt is the velocity of the second particle and it goes on. And V is equal to, if you consider as a whole, V is equal to dr by dt is the velocity of the center of mass okay we have assumed the masses m1 m2 do not change in time whatever the masses we have assumed they will not change with time they are treated as constants in differentiating the equation with respect to time okay again if you differentiate uh, this second equation further with respect to time Again, if you differentiate we get M dv by dt is equal to M1 dv1 by dt M2 dv2 by dt mn dvn by dt we can write it as what yes ma is equal to m1 a1 m2 a2 and it goes on mn an okay so a1 is dv1 by dt is the acceleration of the first particle a2 dv2 by dt is the acceleration of the second particle and a dv by dt is the acceleration of the center of mass so from from newton's second law the force is given by what f1 is equal to m1 into a1 we can write right we can write like this from Newton's second law. So, we can further write this second equation as Ma is equal to F1 plus F2 plus Fn. Isn't it? Yes. Thus, the total mass of a system of particles times the acceleration of its center of mass is the vector sum of all the forces acting on the system of particles. Okay. When we talk of the force F1 on the first particle, it's not a single force. But the vector sum of all the forces on the first particle. Okay. It is not a single force. Vector sum of all the forces which are acting on it. Okay. Similarly for the second, third particles. Among these forces on each particle, there will be external forces exerted by bodies outside the system and also internal forces which are exerted within the system. Okay. We know from Newton's third law that these internal forces occur in equal and opposite pairs. And in the sum of forces, their contribution is zero. Obviously, only the external forces contribute to the equation. 
so we can write the equation as m a is equal to only external forces will contribute f external okay and uh, this equation states that that is m is e m a is equal to f external it states that the center of mass of a system of particles moves as if all the masses of the system was concentrated at the center of mass and all the external forces were applied at that point okay whenever if you consider this equation it says that the center of mass of a system of particles moves as if all the mass of the system was concentrated at the center of the mass and all the external forces were applied at that point okay